Hello. So I'm back after being exiled for a week. <laughs> yes, you were put in timeout for having poopy pants again. Yeah, okay. it was deserved. Yeah. No one wants that around. Well, when you eat Wendy's every day, <laughs> your butt's going to get a little rowdy. I can't imagine doing that, dude. I would, I'd probably die. There was a time I used to. Yeah. Only fast food. Yeah. Like, it was just... Isn't it amazing, though, what the old gut will handle when you're younger and then all of a sudden you can't anymore yeah it's like an iron stomach i literally i was like that bear grills yeah i was eating feces yeah. it didn't matter nice really bill uh, different species feces oh you like that <laughs> is that a doctor joke no i just it rhymed <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, i'm very simple it's crazy how much garbage yeah we can just shove and it handles it for a while. Is it, maybe it's both these, maybe it's one or the other. Mm. Is it, we can just handle it better or we just don't even, we're handling it better, but we also don't even, we're not in tune with our body. So we Correct. don't feel how we act, like how bad it's making us. Well, feel. it's almost like the, you know, when you're, when you're young, it's really hard to kill you. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. I mean, it's, you don't express some of the diseases, chronic diseases of older age mm. because the, the, the machinery's working better. The cellular turnover, the whole thing, yeah. the, you know, the detox mechanisms in your livers works better. Your gut flora is kind of yeah pretty good. You can beat up a new Mustang, but then you get like an old over. Yeah. It's the same, one. same idea. You got to take better care of it. Yeah. So it's just interesting. Yeah. It's a lot of that. And I think you're also your immune system changes over time, which a lot of that is in your GI tract too. Mm -hmm. Kind of gets more sensitive and sometimes it doesn't regulate as well. And, and then your gut flora over time changes. And I think then all of a sudden I notice it. I'm sure you notice it too. We've talked about this when you, when you are pretty clean with your eating, mm -hmm. with no processed food, mm -hmm. any of that for a while. And then all of a sudden you go like, eh, we're going to Vegas or something. Right. And yeah. feel like shit. Right. It's bad. Yeah. So then it's like, Oh, then there's like a <laughs> yeah. weird energy. Like yeah. suck that happens. Totally. Let alone the digestion and all that kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah. But it's like, it just floors you. It feels like similar to when you had like a little bit of a drinking bender mm, the next day. Very you just much. feel like garbage. Dude, yeah. Like when Carrie, hey, that's such a good point. But it's just delicious food. That's oh, yeah. Food. You know, we always talk about the, the 20 minutes of mouth pleasure isn't yes. worth the 36 hours. Of just horrific. So true. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, um, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't do that. It's gnarly. I don't. Yeah. I try to. And I, I pay for that big time when I go off the rails too much. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah it's, it's, it's fascinating, especially after I had this last little episode of mm. uh, having to change, you know, no more energy drinks and candy bars mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Just my body turned on me. It will. It's uh, like, dude, you're treating me well. <laughs> now you're slapping me around again. Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. I mean, not, not, and then it makes me pay severely yeah. for like eight it, hours. I know, dude. Um, we had a, uh, I did a solo episode. Yeah, it's very good. A little judo. I, I titled it judo versus jiu-jitsu, but it's more so. I, well, it's clickbaity. Yeah, it was a little Come bit. Come on, a little bit, but. I, I just it. want to talk about my experience so far of implementing formal judo into my jiu-jitsu training. Well, and you taught, you, you taught class for Andrew on Saturday and did some of that. I thought it was awesome. Um, you know, I, I think it's really good to kind of integrate. In my, I mean, I really liked your episode. Mm. Um, you know, everyone's going to have their opinions, of course. <laughs> There's some professionals in there. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> Professional opinionators anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I think it's super valuable. Now, I, you know, judo training full time, someone, this is just my impression. Okay. Yeah. You could correct me if I'm wrong. My impression is full time judo training is pretty damn hard on the body. It can be. Can be. If I guess it's depending on how it's implemented, right? Yeah, they are one thing that they they are I don't know if better is the right way to say it. Mm. But at least in the culture is like a lot of I see a lot of the older people. Mm -hmm. When I say older, I mean literally forty and up yeah. practitioners, whether they're black belts or not, mm -hmm. they don't spar much. Interesting. They spar maybe once a week but even for with the drill with the so do, let me ask you this it's really the throwing right well i'm just thinking about being hard on the the body the body so 
and this is another thing when they throw like when they're doing technical training uh-huh. you're rarely are you actually completing the throw gotcha kind of what you were doing in class yes, okay. yes. uh uchi komi right the fancy way to say it no or, or no it's cool fit drills yeah um breaking down a technique into let's say a throw i mean you could break it down into five parts let's say but mm. there's three major parts to every throw right which is going to be your off balance kazushi right yeah uchi komi, which is your fit and then your finish which i forgot oh. what the fancy word for that is but. well but there's three parts to every single one mm-hmm. right and uh a lot of the time 90 percent you are doing the first couple which is getting grips and off balance and then fitting or like entering into the throw and then that's like 95 percent. you know practice. and that makes sense to me because what i noticed when we were drilling is that once like i was paired off with my wife and you know after you made some corrections on her that second part mm-hmm. she could have basically you know blew air at me hard and yeah. put me you know i was so yeah. off balance yes it is almost like the other thing it's like an afterthought then i could just kind of tap you yeah. or you know whatever if you do that part literally right. and that's kind of mm. that's a, actually a really good example is you're practicing to the point of the flick yes where you're at almost to the point of like no return yeah and if you're fitting well and you're doing your off balance well and you get to this point i'm just using my hands as like what we were doing Did like, the steering and stuff yeah yeah, yeah is or or let's say a, like a lot of people know what a seonagi is right mm-hmm. it's a turning throw mm-hmm. where you have to have your back and their chest connected mm-hmm. and then you lift them up right so like if you're going to practice seonagis you're going to practice your little footwork your entry and then your load but you don't have to flick them over gotcha now when we do that at the traditional more traditional at the actual judo gym mm-hmm. we'll typically throw on crash pads as well gotcha now they're a little different where they their intention is to land on you like that it makes it a more amplitude of a throw so you can get that epon then finish the match right? yes, yes so when they throw they in our sport it puts them out of position typically right, right? but they're looking for the epon yeah they, that's why you'll see them roll over the body gotcha. and then kind of roll out oh, okay interesting it's, just, it's just, it making it it's making it more intense and more impactful Mm. right um also it is a way for them to uh have full commitment well i really like the fact that that's been and i know andrews is embracing that as well too Mm -hmm. and we do you know he's gonna come join uh, or he's gonna like not i'm not saying join the gym but he's gonna like get some extra instruction that's what i love about him man it's just like you can never learn too much and yeah because what i've noticed is regardless of what you call it that kazushi and that mm-hmm. i mean that's what it's all about anyway and i I, yes. I got so much out of these little adjustments and um that we were going you know even at the, a jujitsu black belt yeah. right i'm like man this is freaking good yeah even from a, which is why in that episode i was like man just from a confidence level of your grip structure yeah and just if you use this stuff as like a jab mm-hmm. of just not letting like i did around with uh our stud college wrestler alan oh man yeah he was yeah i saw alan. he was back yeah and and um you know it was it was a clash of styles obviously he's a current <laughs> you know college wrestler that does very well He's graduated now but still he just finished his last year yeah because he had a red uh red year year. yeah okay um so he just did his fifth year dude and he's you know built like captain america yeah all that for sure it was a good time for me to test Mm. just i wasn't necessarily thinking i would throw him but Mm. i at least wanted to test my grip structure and then my off balance to mess up his cadence yes right because you don't gonna, want to get him him get his yeah thing going. he starts to get his timing yeah and then you're then you're on, on your back <laughs> yeah, yeah he's in on your legs before you even know it yeah exactly so with my grip structure and just some of these principles that kazushi mm-hmm. he admitted he's like man i had to actually think i was like i i have to do something else here like there's this is one it was very unfamiliar to mm-hmm. him the grip structure mm-hmm. and then two just the movements and stuff and i was harassing his feet a little mm-hmm. bit so it kind of messed up that cadence a little bit so See, just from that that's a great help. point 
Um, just because, you know, if you're a competitor in jujitsu, mm -hmm. you very well may be going against someone that is like a former wrestler and that's their takedown game, right? Especially if you are, in my opinion, a blue or purple belt, uh -huh. you're going to run across more wrestlers at the blue belt level yeah, and probably purple belt level than any uh, belt. I'd agree. Because they, they're going to be fast tracked to blue belt pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, just which they should. I mean, yeah, they're they grapplers. Have a ton of yeah, grappling yeah. experience. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the time, wrestlers will fizzle. <laughs> kind of like normal seen, people fizzle that. to blue. Yeah, yeah. They kind of fizzle, fizzle to, purple. to purple. Yeah, <laughs> I saw that too. Um, and so you guys that are at that level that mm -hmm. are not wrestlers, you need something. Because mm -hmm. if you're going to just rely on pulling guard and having a good guard mm -hmm. against a wrestler that now he's a blue belt or close to a purple or is a purple. Mm -hmm. That means he has jujitsu too. Right. So you're, you kind of have to have something that can mess up their timing from the get go, in my opinion. Yeah, and some of those, those early parts of a, a match, um, especially if you get taken down and you're already down two points and yeah. it kind of sets the tone a now little if bit. A wrestler just says, I'm going to sit on top. I'm going to smush. I'm just smushing. Yeah, now. totally, I'm, dude. I'm just going to have a wide base, be on, pass on my knees, yep. stay low. E mm -hmm. Good luck. That's going to be hard. It's real hard. A lot of work to do there. Yeah, that's a really good point. So I, I think those of you listen, I mean, you know, we really need to embrace all these different things yeah. that I think that can um, that help um, all aspects of the game. Don't be so, you know, myopic on, well, I'm just going to do jujitsu or I'm just... I'm a wrestler. I'm just going to do that, you know? Yeah. Cause I think the learning curve at first with mm -hmm. judo, it's so different that a lot of people are like, I'm never going to get this. Yeah. You know, cause they don't have the reps. Right. Yeah. And I think when you, when we go to class and we, we, we spend a good 20 minutes doing fit drills or something on a certain technique, yeah. then you're like, ah, uh, yeah. So anyway, that, yeah, I just want to give you feedback on that. I thought it was awesome. Well, I appreciate that. And yeah. you know, um, someone actually asked cause I, I had brought up what that I was teaching myself for mm. quite a bit mm -hmm. and they're like, well, what instructionals, uh, mm -hmm. do you use? And I was going to, um, look up on BJJ fanatics cause I typically was only doing, um, YouTube stuff for the most part, mm -hmm. but I did buy one instructional and I'm trying to actually find it right now. I can't remember the freaking guy's name. It's like a, a Thai last name, um, like Namakan or something like that. It's really long, um, but it's on BJJ or no, maybe it's on Liv. Can you look up on Jujitsu X? It's like a foot sweep tutorial. Oh yeah. Foot can you look that up? Foot sweep of fury or something, something like that. Um, but she'll look that up and get you that. Dom Bell, Dominic Bell from Autos headquarters. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. His YouTube page has. He's the daytime instructor at Autos headquarters mm. and he will film his class that he teaches. So it's like you get to sit in on his class. He's a judo black belt mm. and his style of teaching, his Instagram is very good His social media. It, he puts out a lot of techniques and mm -hmm. he just explains stuff very easily. Mm -hmm. um, kind of like John Thomas we've talked about kind of yeah. explains things yeah, concise see. and uh, yeah. um, detail oriented though. Totally. So it's easily, easily digestible. Dom Bell is the same, but I've done it with judo. And I, I really like his YouTube page. Um, Dubious Dom is, is his uh, Instagram name. Then a guy named Shintaro. Yep. I think Higashi. I'm familiar with him. Yeah, he's very popular on YouTube. Yeah. Um, in the judo world. He obviously has. Was, he the, was he the coral belt or red he's belt? A, yeah, he's a coral belt yeah. in judo. He just got his jiu-jitsu black belt last year. Yeah. Um, through Henzo Gracie. Yeah, and he 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 has some great stuff too. Yeah, I, he, I've looked at that. He, or maybe was it Henzo Gracie? And it because I know he trains at JT Torres Gym at Essential. Yeah, and then he also trains with Henzo and Brian Glick and stuff. Interesting. Now I know in the judo world, there's maybe opinions about Shintaro and but there's whatever. Oh, okay. To me, the guy has so much content that just taking in all that judo content is really nice and really mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. Um, as a practitioner, I don't know, but I get a lot from his content. Yeah. Um, what do you have that? I don't know how to pronounce his name, but it is foot sweeps of fury. Pan 
Yeah, just look up on Jujitsu X foot sweeps of fury. Yeah, like not non compan or something like that. Um, I apologize. N a k a p a n. What? But just so you guys listen, we just had a competition that our um, our academy did really well in, and honestly, is carried by the white belts mm-hmm. almost. Yeah. Um, you know, as far as getting gold, when we have a, we have a now who just got promoted to blue belt. Mm-hmm. Um, so white belt was very diligent in some of these things and hit those foot sweeps in competition. And so he had seven matches submitted everybody. Yep. And in his four gi matches, I mean, even in Nogi, he threw someone, but in all four of his gi matches, he hit people with a Sasai or a Hizukuruma, mm-hmm. which is the throw that mm-hmm. I have my video on. Right. And he was with me every step of the way. As I was teaching myself, he was. I, he came in probably halfway through or three quarters of the way through, yeah. and was like, "I just want to do this." So yeah, he would. You would watch him drill after class. Totally, he would grab Justin. Justin, and, yep, I saw that. And and they would just be doing it by themselves, and they just took my limited instruction. Just in a couple months. Yes, and paid off hugely. Yeah. So he learned it from someone that wasn't even formally trained himself. <laughs> right. They had to learn himself. Right. And were applying it in competition. Mm-hmm. So it can be a little daunting to think like, can I really like teach myself something? As I talked about in the in the solo episode. Yeah. Yes, the road is a little longer for sure, and you're gonna have to like go through more trial and error. Yeah, because you're not getting someone to say, hey, hey, hey. You know, here, yes. well, I want you to do this. And, and like know. I said, with the grip thing, I totally. always, I knew that high grip is super important as in like yeah. gripping on the lapel. Yeah. But I've never done the back grip. Right. Which has completely changed my game. Now. Me too. Now i am always do that. Now you feel it. I'm like, wow, this is really the controlling. Amount of control. Yeah. Is, especially when you bring that, bring that um, forearm over. Yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. It's, it's incredible. And there's a confidence that comes with it. So yeah. The formal training got me there yeah. <laughs> with that. But yeah. a tie, our, our white belt, he now blue belt, he, he he's self-taught. Yeah. And and so you guys can do it. Absolutely. You just got to really kind of commit but to it. But he has it. some beautiful, oh, I, I mean, mean, beautiful foot sweeps, Might man. have been someone that quit jiu-jitsu after one of them. Well, oh, because it, I, the one, yeah. this would, you know, it might be a good idea to get his permission because I think those some of those are we have some video. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we do. Because watching that is amazing. Because yeah. I saw one of them, I'm like, that was beautiful. I you mean, know? it was the effortless flick, looking. Yeah, feet Ch- above the head. It was crazy. Yeah, incredible into arm bars too. Oh it's my just gosh! Yeah. So right back. yeah, exactly. So anyway, um, so I think it's super valuable. I really enjoyed your episode, yeah. and um, so it Sweet. was good, man. And I see some of the other comments in there, like some some people kind of giving their two cents about why they. Th- they think um, some of the differences and and it derives from like competition rules Mm. and stuff like that. Mm. I don't know if I agree completely with some of your comments. I'm going to like jump in there and I'll respond and we can have like a discussion, maybe talk Mm. about it more. Um, We also have someone that thinks we should reach out to that Josh Setledge that we talked about his workout protocol. Yeah. yeah, That Um, that maybe dude, he's, he's awesome, man. Um, His, all this stuff is legit. I only made, the point about you know man like i always do no matter what your inputs are is managing recovery yeah that episode wasn't meant to be like a shit on him now my title fake news yeah but if you listen to it that i even go out of my way to you know to say that you know this is not that at all because i think his stuff is found it's founded on one of the most successful powerlifting gyms ever right right Right. Um, and we were very specifically, or you were very specifically, but specifically talking about mm, people of a certain age group. Yeah, I was. That are trying to obtain a skill, BJJ or whatever, and then adding a, this exact strength and conditioning protocol, not his online coaching. I'm sure if he, he does an online coaching thing and he's super accountable and, and just by judging all his other stuff, he seems very good. But just taking that one protocol because that was what they asked me yes yeah yeah and that one protocol because we had a question come in about that exact one that's right and the age group of the practitioner so yeah yeah no man yeah. It, it got, i've been since since i was that video shared with me i've been kind of you know stalking his site sure, sure. um he has some just 
you know, it's solid, man. Mm -hmm. Solid stuff. So yeah, I would love to, you know, love to um, chat with him sometime. Yeah. Um, Today's episode. Yeah. We are going to talk about the biggest mistakes that we see each belt level makes. So. Including myself? uh, Including black belts. No, but including myself along the journey. Yeah. Yeah. From, if you, from once your own I, experience. My own experience, not yeah. just, yeah. Totally. Yeah. Um, so let's start with the gringos. Yeah. The whiteies. Well, it's interesting. We had three first day folks in yesterday. We did. Um, great, great guys. Um, yeah. I thought they were awesome. Yeah. I know you're going to say that. I'm you're trying to, be a, you're trying to be a turd. They're our friends' friends, so it's yeah, yeah. You should be respectful. How dare you? <laughs> I'll um, I'll but bow. but one of the things that was a common theme with them, mm-hmm. and I see this at white belt level, and I it's I don't know if it's a mistake, but it's a pattern that mm. I think most of us go through, and just to be aware of early on, if you can help it. That, DRT. <laughs> <laughs> Why? I don't know. Get on the train, boys. No, you can't. I can't say something like that. Oh my god! Um, it's the amount of uh, muscular tension. Mm. They'll come in, and it's natural flight or fight response. Let's say they're grappling for you know even the first six months. Yeah, especially you feel like you're getting handled, but you're getting handled usually in a way that is using a lot of positional technique and stuff. But you you don't have that. So you are, you're relying on trying to body rigidity and trying to muscle through things. You're emptying your gas tank super quick. And the analogy I was telling this one guy, I pr- purposely went and rolled with the biggest guy there. Um, the tall fellow. Yeah. Well, he's, yeah, he's good size. He was like six, three six, three or something. or something. Yeah. And what I was telling him, cause I was significantly undersized compared to him. Yeah. You're what? Five, Three. <laughs> As all short guys say, I'm five eight and a half, in right? The morning. Yeah, exactly. Right when I'm a little bit a little bit taller. <laughs> yeah, about a quarter inch. Yeah, well, maybe. Um, no, I'm at, I'm about five eight, one seventy five. Um, but I think he was just like didn't understand how he's getting swept so easily, mm. right? And I was trying to say, look, man when you are coming in and you may not even realize you're doing this and you have this full body tension, you're like a board, right? And yes, you know, if you have a 200 pound board, I can throw that around much easier than a 200 pound sandbag. Mm-hmm. Right. If someone or 50 pound sandbag at that right. or even right. Yeah. yeah, totally. But, but you know, yeah. and then, you know, he was saying, you know, especially when we got, I got on top, he's like, you feel so heavy. Mm it's the same principle of being able to try to be more relaxed. And I struggled with this. I mean, you can ask sure. our professor. I sure. mean, he will still, he'll tell you for sure. And I struggled this big time. And it I'm, can still creep in like stuff. Abs- that, like, sure it can. Yeah. And it, it has. Yeah. Um, but this is something to be really aware of. Um, I think it was a mistake not to concentrate even more to really try to, relax a little bit. Mm. Okay. And not, there's a time for isometric tension. Mm. There's a time, mm-hmm. but there's, you, you don't want to run. It's one of the hardest things to explain to someone is when me or you, me yeah. and you are rolling. Yeah. It's hard to tell people and explain like, okay, when the white, when I'm rolling with a white belt, like let's say this big fella, mm-hmm. he's stiff the whole time. That's right. Every fiber in his body is erected. That's right. Right? Yep. Now, and then I explained, well, okay, yes. Well, when Chris and I are going, it, there is a ton of tension though. Like we're not just loosey goosey. No. There's a ton of tension, but it's not our whole body. It's in very specific moments Mm -hmm. and parts of our body. That's right. Let's, Whether that's a, a pinning grip where it's like, I, I'm i keeping this grip right here and I do not want Chris to even move it because one, it'll give you an advantage maybe, yeah. or two, I need it to progress. That's right. But n- I'm not doing my your, whole body. Your whole body <laughs> tension. Or, you know, a cross face and top half guard. Yeah. Right. I'm putting a lot of shoulder pressure down, but my legs are light. 
because I'm relaxed and so I and can even your I core can, is I can, not uh-huh. yeah tense, but you have a shoulder shrug. You're doing a uh, yeah pull in a pull in retraction kind of with your arm elbow yeah. tight. And other than that, but everything else, you know, I'm trying to I'm trying to be loose hips so I can pummel in and out right. And then the only tension is at, once you get to the position. Let, we're talking about a side control. <clears throat> Uh, shoulder like into the neck like really applying a lot of shoulder pressure mm. and then at that point once you get there it's just your lats engaged yeah and oftentimes i'm, I'm that's my relaxation mm-hmm. that, you know <clears throat> you know pass me i had a hard time passing guard mm-hmm. and i'm a little gasped from it that's when um, you catch your breath catch right my there. breath get in a good position where i'm yeah while you know they're trying to get out from it's it. hard to explain how yeah we're we have like Andrew and I have that a lot because we get into kind of funky positions Your position too. where our grip structure mm-hmm. is imperative. So we will commit to certain grips, even though we're like both sitting on our butt, right? but like my foot's in the back of his knee yes, with a pants grip, but then yeah. he has my cross pants grip. And you're trying to, yeah. Neither one of us can really come up, but we're both trying to come up at the whole time. Yeah. So we have tension in our legs, but then we're also kind of like yeah. playing this weird chess match. So, <clears throat> but you'll see that being able to control that kind of tension and that yeah. flight or fight response is one of the biggest things to look at as a white belt. Any recommendations on how to start addressing that? So fixing. Well, that? yeah, it won't happen right away. It won't. <laughs> and so try first of all, start breathing through your nose as much as possible. Mm-hmm. Like try to do a whole round breathing through your nose. Try to just the parasympathetic. Yeah. Catch yourself breathing through your mouth. Go back to your nose. Yep. Um, fi- just be conscious of your, do self check-ins with your body, right? And you're like, am I, you know, every little, am I just clenched down, you know? Because you're just going to, you're going to dump everything. All your energy is going to go. Well, yeah. If you're the, even an in shape person, over gripping it's the same thing two minutes in and you're like i think i might have to take a break yeah but then the older 40 50 plus year olds yeah that have good economy of but i'm not breathing hard yet we're just sitting there that's right <laughs> not breathing hard yeah um being in the bottom of a bad position it's the same thing mm-hmm. instead of just this ultra tension and stuff you're you know you need to look for your angles. You need to start, you need to breathe and you need to have some relaxation. Mm -hmm. Um, and not just this, you know, like we're eight seconds on a bucking Bronco here, you know what I mean? Where you're just trying to muscle someone off of you. Mm -hmm. So I think as a white belt, I think if I had to see one thing, um, that, and really, and this is so cliche, but really look at, your fundamentals, your, some gets, get sharp in your fundamentals and not worry so much about, am I submitting someone every round? The submissions are cool, Mm -hmm. right? And there's nothing wrong. You should learn, you know, as you go along, but position, really learn that positional game. Mm -hmm. And I think that's going to help a lot. Um, The other thing, one more thing that I'm going to turn it over to you at white belt is you really should, spend the time because you're going to be in shitty situations really honing in that defense and escape start at that early level right because you'll see a lot of white belts especially you know and i'm gonna pick on wrestlers a little bit they won't play guard at all Mm. they're gonna play their top game okay Mm -hmm. totally so that's the truth go do you have anything else uh i i love it the i would say if you can focus as a white belt on concepts more than techniques mm-hmm. i think you can one not feel so overwhelmed uh two have a better understanding of what the heck we're even doing right because what can happen is in the especially in the beginning jujitsu seems so big mm-hmm. and it is yeah it is but overwhelmingly big mm-hmm. especially when you get to that point where okay you're in it for six months you you have noticed like you've gotten a little bit better you want to start submitting people but so you start looking up submissions and now you're just 
doing them very poorly. You're getting out of position even more. So now Mm -hmm. you're getting submitted more out of nowhere Mm -hmm. because you're opening up more. Mm -hmm. And if you can focus, I think typically most white belts don't even focus at all on concepts. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is like little stuff like the example I used earlier where Andrew and I are both on our butts and we've found ourselves in a, a leg entanglement of some sort. And I don't mean like a Ashigarami or something like that. I mean, I was passing, he had daily Heva, he knocked me over to my hip and now we're in essentially a scramble, a 50, 50 scramble. Well, I know if I grab the bottom leg pant grip, he cannot get up. He knows that too. So immediately our grip structures will change after he knocks me over. He doesn't want me to technical lift because the way we technical lift is the hip that's touching the the ground. We heist our or hoist our hips up, bring the knee or foot behind our hand, our posting hand or elbow, and then we get up. Right. Or we can push forward and kind of wrestle up, right? Like where we flare or open up our hip, let's say up to the knee and then push forward. If we have the bottom pant grip, we can defend that by, as they do that, we pull the pant back and they can't do it. They're going to be doing like a flagpole plank thing, right? Like a side plank. So the same, this is conceptual. So the yeah. same idea is also, if you can grab a sleeve on that bottom arm mm-hmm. and kind of pull it in so yeah. they can't pull it through to get that right. position too. So, you know, you kind of have that rotational control yeah. too as a concept. Exactly. Yeah. Just from a concept perspective, understanding if you have a bottom side grip, because a lot of time you'll just grab what you can mm-hmm. and you'll grab one of their pant legs and it'll typically be the wrong one or you'll maintain a collar grip, which is doing nothing, nothing for you. Exactly. Like you're just, you're holding them closer, mm-hmm. does nothing. Right. right? Um, understanding little stuff like that, I think can mm-hmm. help you prog- like fill in a lot of gaps as you learn more techniques naturally through just doing class will help a lot. And, and we'll, uh, and even understanding Kazushi and off balance, right? Like push pull, you'll use that in every moment in jujitsu, especially as you get better, you'll realize you have to do push pull or pull push to even make anything work ever. That's so true. Um, rotational control, mm-hmm. looking at um, hip and opposite shoulder, right? That kind of thing. Twisting their spine out of alignment so they're not in such a strong position. Right. Um, ex- why do we never, as a passer, want someone playing sit-up guard? Simple as that. It's as simple as a, it's a concept. It's not even a technique. There's techniques to getting them on their back, but the concept is if I someone's playing sit up guard and I step close enough to make contact with them. They can make contact with me, but because they're playing sit up guard, they can make contact with their hands and their feet or shins. That's right. right. Like a in step or something. You can get under you. And, and and now they have four points of contact from a passer's perspective. My whole goal is to negate contact and connection. Mm -hmm. So, by allowing this person to play sit up guard and me stepping close enough, which we always do in sparring. And I'm not saying you never like, sometimes you, you, you do that just to instigate a, a position, sure. but from a concept perspective, understanding, no, I need to first get them on their back. So then all I'm dealing with is two limbs, which is going to be an easy reach to their pants. You're not going to be dealing with four immediate four four. points of contact that, that just come out at you Yeah, compared to two on two and Mm -hmm. then i have the advantage so because i'm using my hands to engage rather than they are using their feet so you know seeking out concepts like that like you know and i guess if you're brand new like well how do i know what concepts to you know and hopefully you can ask some like hey just conceptually you know is there something concept level big picture from this position that Mm -hmm. i should look at you know not overall like you just said you know um i think that's a good idea knees and elbow connection Mm. You're like oh, perfect example diamond for position, escape, right? yeah, or guard retention, or yeah, totally, yeah, great, yeah. So stuff like that, it I I think, and that you know, this conversation goes into blue belt too, exactly. <laughs> so, so I'll I mean, kick blue belt off. It's almost the same answer. It is. <laughs> um, I think what can happen is okay. You got some Fruit Loops in your in your belly, mm-hmm. and now 
you want some ice cream, mm -hmm. right? We're talking about a normal dinner here and <laughs> a well-balanced meal yes. for that. Yeah. yeah. All dairy. the food groups, a lot yeah. of dairy. Gotcha. Now you think you're ready for that ice cream, but you're not, you're going to get a tummy ache. It's too much sugar too soon. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And what, and as a blue belt, you start, I, I defer to the expert, but yes, you. I understand. Thank you. I understand. I'm putting some respect on my name. Yes. You go, you're getting too much sugar too early. What I, and the sugar in this instance is Barambolo, mm -hmm. Lapel Guard, Matrix. <laughs> Matrix. Like, <laughs> and I'm not saying never do get these fancy. things. Yeah, you get fancy. And you're talking to probably. Oh, I know who I'm talking top to. Top 10 fanciest yeah. Jiu Jitsu guys in the gym. I think so. So I'd go top five. Top I'd go top two. <laughs> I, top two. <laughs> I would go Are top you number two. One? I mean, well, who, who's more fancy? I don't know if I got enough flash for the or gas for the flash, but um, I mean, Boots is he tries to be fancy. He you know what though? You know what he's like though. You yes. know you have Fruit Loops, right? And uh -huh. then you have the knockoff, like at a cheap grocery store, grocery outlet. That is like bag. it's yeah. That it's it says like it's fruit like fruit rings fruit, fruit yeah, rings fruit. yeah <laughs> loopy fruits. It's like loopy fruits. It's like loopy. they're not really Fruit Loops, but they're really trying to be. And when you taste them, they're not is so that his good. New nickname loopy fruits. I think it's a good one. <laughs> and by the way, I'm game on between him and I because he's been messing with me a lot. He has, <laughs> and he's as queer as a three dollar bill. <laughs> not that there's anything wrong with that. Not. I meant that as like a fourth grader joke. We should probably mute that. I'm not doing anything for you. Damn. I don't want the algorithm. Oh, fine. Okay. You should just bleep it as a $3 yeah. bill. People will know. Yeah. Old people will. At least. I'll know. <laughs> yeah. You got to um, say it with a Southern accent there. Boy, right. that boy's a, <laughs> a $3 bill. a $3 bill. Or Indian accent. East Indian. Got it. What? Feather. No, I can't do that. Oh, okay. Just keep going, Bill. Just keep going. I come by the Southern one naturally. Yeah, so I could true. do that. Yeah. Okay. All right. So it goes into Blue Belt. You get too much sugar and you start going towards all this other stuff that looks awesome. You kind of got some basic movements down. You know how to invert a little bit at least. Mm -hmm. And you start getting tantalized by all this stuff because I want to be a murderer. Mm -hmm. You watch Tommy Langacker once and you're like, I'm in. Mm -hmm. Crab ride. Crab mm -hmm. ride city. Once again, not saying don't do this stuff. Don't mm -hmm. explore it because you explore early and you'll start finding what you naturally are kind of good at or gravitate mm -hmm. towards. Oh, man, I'd see Kimura's mm -hmm. all the time. That's fantastic. But don't stray away from conceptual stuff like base, like guard retention. Totally. If you can have a good defense. By the time you're a purple belt and brown belt, when you really start honing in your offense, if you have a, sh uh, a, a really good defense, you can trust it and you can be offensive. I saw that from Gary Tonin. It's true, though. Danaher, where you can go after stuff and yes. be more aggressive with your and offense. And not be afraid to be put in a bad spot. Like, That's oh, right. okay, I went for this I missed it. Now triangle. This, this I got spot. stacked. The guy passed. Well, you're not afraid of side control anymore. That's right. I like it. You, blue belt, big mistakes mm, that you see. The, you 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 hit the one I was gonna trying to get too fancy too quick. Oh really? Okay. That's like the biggest one I I saw. What, what about, did, can you think of anything that you made a mistake as a blue belt? <laughs> Jeez, dude, a lot of them. Um, I didn't strength and condition. I still don't. No, that was not a problem for me. Not for you. I think that was something that you actually probably maintained the whole time. I, I did. It's something I wish I had done. And I think I maybe said this on one of the episodes. It's something I I wish I had done f maybe for honestly from the get-go. Mm -hmm. But whenever I've done strength and conditioning, it's been for a month. And then I'm done. And then bored easy. Yeah. And it's just lack of discipline. And from a... I've been fortunate. I haven't had like really like too many like super severe injuries. I've definitely gotten injured. But so strength and conditioning would totally for someone that hasn't been lucky like me will help you be quote unquote lucky and stay healthy. This definitely applies to white and blue belt. I would say a mistake I made. And I've said this before. Yeah. Is I did not concentrate enough. I did my strength and conditioning, but I did not concentrate enough on my mobility stuff. Because we That's always right. do the strength and conditioning stuff that we like. Yes. 
We yeah. like this. I like this lift. This is what I like. I'm good at it. I'm going to do it. As opposed to, well, dude, your hamstring mobility sucks. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. Or would you, know? you rather have, because we're like literally two ends of the spectrum here. Yeah. You've always maintained good strength conditioning mm -hmm. and physical fitness. Mm -hmm. I have always had good mobility and flexibility. Did you work at it or you just kind of? Uh, there was a time in my life I did. For okay. Sure. Perfect. Uh, now I think I have, I don't know, genetics or something. Because, for example, we were sitting with my mom. Mm -hmm. She's a normal American, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and she was sitting in the lotus position yeah. on a bench. Right. She just literally like, so pulled her feet in into a full load she doesn't even do yoga or nothing yeah there's there's definitely some people that have that <laughs> yeah right so yeah you're exactly right so work on the stuff that you need not necessarily as well, far as that my goes. question was would you rather uh -huh. have the strength and conditioning like how people typically will go that road not the mobility and stuff would you rather in earlier on have better mobility now guys girls you can work on both yeah. You don't got to pick up. No, no, saying I that. understand what you're saying, though. Would you, which one do you, would focus. you say is better to focus on or is more value, quote unquote, valuable? Well, for me, yeah. it would have been mobility. Yeah. In other words, I really should have spent a lot more time doing that. And especially like the FRS type of thing where mm -hmm. mobility and strength are kind of intertwined because you're building that end range strength right. to, to achieve mobility. And I think that is a more useful strength for jujitsu anyway. Personally, especially in the, in and the, injury prevention yeah. for sure. And because I was especially a victim of several times, I've had some bad, yeah, yeah. Some, some injuries um, that I could have been avoided. Yeah. So that was a mistake, I think. Mm -hmm. Yep. I could see that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As being, being a big one. Um, and people do typically just focus on the strength conditioning side and they don't, man, I know Olivia's had crazy good results with warming down after yeah. stretching after training of course holy smokes i know it's been very big for her well it's a it's the best time to do it and it's also a good time to get in those frs type of stuff mm -hmm. you know some of those little isometric mobilization things yeah. absolutely yeah nervous systems already warm yeah like my uh, hamstrings aren't as tight as these mm -hmm. i actually can mm -hmm. touch my toes and that was i mean just even though i've always been more mo mm -hmm. have good mobility and all that i have certain movements that i'm not and especially previously i had extremely horrible internal hip rotation yeah and i think we were just talking about this on saturday where you have excellent some your internal rotations gotten much better mm -hmm. your external rotations preposterously good right um but then your adductors aren't quite right so this is for everyone to listen to this is important a big predictor of injury in the future is imbalances in movement, right? If you have a big gaping hole in your mobility, it's probably going to get exploited eventually, right? And so looking at that, that's where it's helpful to have, you know, kind of go through and say, hey, where am I having problems? And the closest I've come to having like bad injuries uh -huh. is when someone's doing kind of like a, let's say I throw a triangle up. Yep. I start getting stacked. Yep. I have to open my legs. Yep. And they pin one, the leg that's under the armpit. Yep. But my top leg is on their shoulder. That's right. And that is how I rip my adductor. Mm -hmm. Exactly that position. And I f feel a, like tremendous amount of pain in that. Like I've, I have felt well it, at moments. Right. And so for you, that's why I told you on Saturday, I'm like, dude, yeah. if you, if you got that to, to the degree of your, it, you know, your other stuff, yeah. your other stuff. Yeah. Good luck passing your guard at all. Right? Right, right. And so, you know, so that's a interesting. Yeah. So, but when I s started addressing the internal rotation of mm -hmm. my hips, mm -hmm. um, the other one that we were just talking about is like, Ad if you guys know, yeah. Adductors. Yeah. Your adductors are, are tight. It's like the Van Dam, like doing your splits or something like the that. side splits. Yeah. Right. Um, I Pancake, whatever you want to call it from that position. I can't open my legs very. Right. Very so far. that's an adductor issue. But and probably it, weak, relatively weak abductors too, if mm -hmm. I had to guess. Okay. Usually they go hand in hand. Gotcha. When I say relatively weak compared to your other. Sure. Yeah. And then, so, but we started addressing my internal hip rotation mm -hmm. and literally 
this might sound like a lot to some people, but I would say of actually focusing on it three or four months later, mm-hmm. I was com- I, completely different. And mm-hmm. now I would say I have average, maybe even better than average. It's in, above average. In, in internal hip, hip rotation. Last time we tested it, it's like incredible. Yeah. It's so much better. Yeah. So, so that is a yeah. big thing not to, I guess, a mistake is to neglect mm. when you know you have a problem somewhere. For sure. Especially on the early stages, right? For sure. Yeah. Um, Purple belts. Okay. You got something? Yeah. Okay. So getting into a game that you like, which I did at Purple Belt for sure, you know, play that kind of half guard knee shieldy thing was like, yeah, I suck at open guard. I'm not, I'm not even close guard. I'm not going to do that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. What's oh, and yeah. what's what's ironic is that's all I've been playing I for last because I've said the same thing. Before. Right. That's all I've been playing for the last six months is closed guard. Right. Right. Um, on purpose, but really, circle. I hate to use the word circle back, but cir- but circling back on some of your fundamentals again, um, and keep addressing some things, especially the things you don't quote unquote like to play. That's a no. purple belt definitely a good one not mm. to neglect go back in the stuff you're neglecting because you don't like it mm-hmm. um because what i found now is a black belt i'm sweeping more from <laughs> i've over the last six months mm-hmm. i've come huge amount more so than i had in my entire previous journey in my closed guard effectiveness mm. okay and that's just because i was just like dude i'm gonna stop because I, I can't feel like I can be a black belt and have a just a crap closed guard. Right. Dude, that's really, you know, I can say I have short legs and whatever. <laughs> dude, come on. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Sure. Yeah. So um, that's a that's the main thing at Purple Belt. I would say is you can fall in love with your game mm-hmm. and get really good, like black belt level. Yeah. Right. For sure. Um, you have your go tos, and then you'll start neglecting some of the stuff that kind of starts falling by the wayside. Mm-hmm. That I think is uh, doing you a disservice. Yeah, my answer is similar, mm-hmm. and I think what can happen is, yes, you will. You've kind of started to develop a game, and you go all in on it, mm-hmm. which good. Yes, you want to continue to sharpen it. So it, when you're a purple belt. Let's say you've been a purple belt for a year. You should have some techniques that are black belt level. Yep. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, you should have a I'm not saying your whole game, and it never is even. <laughs> as in, you're passing. It's as not a even whole. as a black belt, dude. Come on. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, your your passing as a whole, your mm. sweeps as a whole, your submissions as a whole, your defense as a whole. The only thing that should be pretty like all of it is black belt level especially when you when when in my opinion when you're a brown probably a brown belt is your fundamental movements should be pretty crisp for sure as in like drilling with a passive partner an arm bar yep. close guard arm bar yep that should be pretty razor sharp oh for sure your knee squeeze your, your leg curls some basic movement your shrimps all that stuff. Yeah. That kind of stuff should be pretty, pretty darn solid. Mm-hmm. Um, as a purple belt, I, I think what can happen is you can't, people will start to never allow themselves in a bad position. Mm-hmm. And because now you're finally stomping some kids in the schoolyard, mm-hmm. you're making them eat white dog turds. Mm-hmm. You're not eating white dog turds ever again. And then I'm wondering what's wrong with the dog that it has a turd that color (laughs) personally. High magnesium. Is that your veterinary opinion? Yes. Okay. (laughs) There's going to be some veterinary and be like, you guys are fools. (laughs) To be honest, I got it from a movie. Shocking. Yeah. Okay. Um, You ever heard that? You got a belly full of white dog turds? No, I haven't. No. You're missing out. I apparently. So. Anyways, I digest that <laughs> we need to stop f- like 
Eat your own dog turds is what I'm saying. I see. You see what I'm saying? It's like a fortune cookie, dude. Literally. Yeah. I am a fortune cookie. Yeah. And what would my Chinese name be, you think? Oh, my God, dude. Here we go. Okay, I'll let you think about it. I won't go down that No, road. I'm not going to go down that road. Okay. I'm just not because it's going to end up, yeah. no. So <laughs> I had a couple on, on the tip of my tongue. I'm sure you did. So l- put yourself in the poop. Go against white and blue belts. Practice late stage defense. Mm-hmm. Practice your A game with them as well. Kind of like what we talked about with our black belt friend from Canada. Yeah. Where he only gets to train with white and blue belts because yeah. he's running the fundamentals class. Yes, yes, yes. As a purple belt, do that. Use your A game with your purples, browns, blacks. See how the blacks shut it down primarily. Yeah. And how the browns are pretty difficult to, to do stuff with, right? Yeah. And you're working your... your you know, you're having like your A game stuff mm-hmm. or stuff that like, okay, I've been developing it with the white and blues. Let me now try it on the brown. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. But with those, it can be easy to just molly wop the blues and whites, you know, mm-hmm. that, that you can. Like, I'm sure there's some blues that are, yeah. you know, give you fits or something like mm-hmm. that, which is normal. It's fine. It's fine to get caught by them. Yeah. <laughs> um, but don't just abandon ship. And be like, okay, I'm not ever getting put in a bad spot. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, let that white belt throw you in the heater, full locked in triangle. Yeah. Now, don't be a lazy son of a gun, like a dead fish and walk him through it. Yeah. But like, make him kind of do the right. It'll be wrong. Expose your back. Yeah. And now you're in, he has a grip on your collar Mm -hmm. and you're in a, almost a, a full on zipper choke or bone arrow or something. Mm-hmm. Now let's work it. Mm-hmm. Get tapped. I deal with this too. I have big ego. So, but I think at a purple belt that can get left behind mm-hmm. a lot. Mm-hmm. That's so a the, good... And when it happens is it leads into the brown belt, mm-hmm. which in my, I'm stealing your answer for purple belt. Nice. I could see brown. I see brown belts stop exploring new stuff Mm -hmm. and only play their a game what they're comfortable at where they can they'll literally do essentially what you set up for purples and i'll see browns that like this is just what they do Mm -hmm. they're really good at it yes yeah now we have a brown belt a dear friend of mine that i will call him out by name why why what (laughs) why are you gonna call him out by name because he's kind of a dirtbag too. Oh Does he have a really cool voice? He has a cool voice okay. and a cool mustache. I know who you're talking about. He's one of my dear friends too. Yes. And he knows he is extremely good at a certain uh, I can tell game. you what it is. Yeah. It's amazing. Yes. You if you try to pass near side or mid range on this guy, you're probably gonna lose. You know, uh, because he wants you to pressure. He sure him. does. He'll throw his butterflies in and Yep. And me and him have talked about this. That's why I'm okay with okay. saying this is he needs to explore one outside passing, a different passing style than he normally does. And also different guards that are not so reliant on butterflies, overhooks, mm-hmm. underhooks, mm-hmm. butterfly sweeps, uh, sumagashis and shoulder crunch. Shoulder crunch. Yeah. Well, he's, he's freaking phenomenal yeah. at it. Yeah. Like we said, black belt level definitely game there yep he knows he needs to expand outside of that because what happens is people stop going into it oh yeah and putting them in bad yep spots just because of that uh like maybe someone identified uh, like i don't want any part of his butterflies i go in there and just pinch my knees as hard as i can, as hard as can. His feet. sometimes his stupid skinny ass he still gets it too. what is that what's that i just i hate it like so i will literally use all my life to not allow butterfly hooks and he still gets them yeah well he, he that so this is a person that has such a good positional game in that yeah he can it's almost it's hard to stop yeah and so but to your point i it, like that we can talk about mac this way no <laughs> it's pretty cool like being able to mac talk. yeah we were just talking about jake no no that piece of shit <laughs> so mean Bill. no i was talking about mac mac does not have a mustache really oh my god dude oh. 
If you if you said skinny neck and <laughs> old giraffe, yeah, old giraffe and Polish giraffe, well, yeah. Now <laughs> he has another game that's no, hard yeah. to deal yeah. with. Yeah, for a different thing. I was like, where did that leg come from, and how did it wrap me up like right. that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, exactly. But and that's something that Jake's actually working on. Yeah, is expanding that game, not relying on that eight because that eight game will always be there. Yep. It'll sure timing might get a little atrophied at some point, but it'll come back quick. Yeah. As soon as he starts to want to work on it. Mm -hmm. So that's in the back pocket. Yeah. And people need to brown belt should realize that your A game will be there. Become a well rounded. So you're saying, you know, that starting in purple belt, carrying through to brown belt, really pay attention to that. Yeah. Still develop your A game. And by brown belt, you're probably going to have that A game down pretty good. Yeah. But just don't spend that next two years or a year at brown belt or longer just knows, still playing it at just playing that now maybe that's fun i'm not saying never do it sure sometimes like i just you know i just want to play my game and have fun i don't want to think about anything right smash heads go for it yep but um don't get stagnant i agree brown belt what about you no i mean i don't this is why i go first i try to take all the answers <laughs> Well, what's interesting is you took my answer from purple belt and just yeah. put it on the brown belt. So it's kind well, of, you already used yours for purple. So it's kind of something else. Super lazy. <laughs> um, okay. Well, I'll admit it. It is. It was pretty lazy. <laughs> but I'm not saying it wasn't true. Yeah. But it's lazy. It's a little lazy. Um, Any mistakes you made at brown belt that you can think of that that you maybe wish you would have done mm. differently? I think you were a brown belt for two years. Two years, yeah. Two years. I was. We had a little bit of time there that, um, yeah, to kind of go through stuff. Oh man, That's were a you a brown belt during Voldemort? Yes. Okay, and then out, and then towards the back end. Towards the back end, yeah, I was. Um, I would say something that I didn't do enough at brown belt before I got my orthodontics put on is do more competitions mm. um i did one it was mm -hmm. a crappy competition i remember that yeah um but it would have been better i think to get a couple more because purple belt was a drought for me in competition i did a lot at blue belt a lot i did sure yeah um but then not at purple, right? Not, yeah, and it's for whatever reason. I don't I know if it was. Purple, but, yeah, yeah, it's interesting. I don't know why. It didn't make any sense. Um, but I think I think that would have been good. Um, I kind of regret not doing more. Yeah. I'm itching right now. At You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah I, I was able to get revenge on that brown belt guy. You did, the capoeira guy? If you beat one of us, the other's coming back at you. Well, and we, yeah, we talked about that one. There's a little yeah. bit of, there's a little bit of uh chicanery. Yeah. <laughs> he was a little, uh, advantageous on resets. So. Oh, it was good though. It's yeah. a learning experience too, but that's the point though. That's the whole point is Literally. to, is to get those more, especially now as a coach, I'm coaching in competition. So um, you're super aware of like reset grip, oh, big grips and stuff time. Like Cause I was a victim of it. Yeah. Um, just like I'm super aware of baseball joke, uh, baseball sure. choke grips. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I was choked out with one. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that, you know, getting, because you're getting to the level, especially, you know, depending on your academy, you may be coaching mm -hmm. at competitions, um, certainly at black belt, but at brown belt too. And um, it's, I think it'd been nice for me to get a little more experience there. It was, it was a tough time though, because it was during the freaking Voldemort yeah. shit. I'm yeah. not making excuses. I mean, there were opportunities, but still. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah. yeah. So that's something I think would have been good is to keep, keep that going a little more. For yeah. Me. I, I wish I competed more at, yeah. between that purple to brown. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you didn't really have, same with Chris, like as far as purple goes, like. Yeah. Cause I it was, was literally at the very beginning of. Cause COVID. I think when you got your brown, oh, I got my purple. Voldemort. Belt. Oops. Yeah. Oopsies um so i, th I think i can't remember maybe, dude r roughly and um so we kind of had the during that time of everyone's lives 
a couple of years ago. Yeah. Um, yeah. We had to go through that. So, uh, we yeah, that would have been nice. Um, I, I think, think I, I, I wish at purple belt is when I started emphasizing more on the stand up. Oh, rather than black belt. That's a great point too. Yeah. I, I, I wish purple and Brown. Uh, yeah. I wish cause at purple, I started to have, you know, you're considered advanced. Yeah. You have a, you have a grip on the ground game. Um, I wish I had put more mm. time mm. into stand up, and I'm not even saying judo. I'm just saying in general, yeah. stand up in general. Um, and we're seeing the benefits out of m- perhaps you're taking advantage and thinking about maybe what you wish you would have done, and now imparting it on to some of our younger folks now that are our students. Yeah, and you're seeing the benefits of that. I think so. Yeah, I, I think the academy gets lifted up when um just people in the gym Mm -hmm. not saying a coach obviously if a coach starts doing something Mm -hmm. and then andrew both of us are in uh you know we obviously talk every day Mm -hmm. and and we're both encouraging each other to to do those like i told him on saturday i for the first 40 minutes or something i i was teaching uh size mm-hmm. and he's like awesome that's it's, great but it is it's yeah so yeah i agree but even um like the influence on our white belt friend mm-hmm. now blue belt mm-hmm. and then uh, acacia let's say another white belt totally that are really starting their journey with stand up as a focal point so when mm-hmm. they are purple belts, they're going to be so much farther ahead. We have a purple belt now too. It's really embraced it too. Yeah, yeah, so exactly. That, yeah, and so I see what you're saying. People can it, the whole, and then as people see them do it, they're like, "Oh, this is super effective." The whole academy starts. To yeah, raise. yeah, I like that. Yeah, yeah. So the the theme is, you know, we're talking about mistakes we or mistakes or yeah. missed opportunities and stuff. Um, yeah, I think that covers that. I can't think of any more. There, there was one mistake I made in Thailand once. It was <laughs> horrific. You've never been. <laughs> you got to like, shut the joke down that early? Yes. Well, th- once they get more um, PCR technology where you can take a blood sample uh-huh. and determine XX versus XY, you should be all right. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm yeah. assuming that's what you're talking about. You're talking about Bill Gates and what he wants to do to us. No, I wasn't at all. I don't know how you got there, but that was weird. Okay. I thought I was. That's a different solo episode as well. I hope oh so. My gosh. I hope so. That's a completely different podcast. And that so way you go deep, homeboy. Well, you can. You can do a solo episode. You can turn the lights down, make it yeah. a little weird. Yep. Yeah, let's get weird. I like it. <laughs> um, black belt. Well, I'm... this one might be hard. Yeah, it is. What are some mistakes you see black belts in your gym? doing wrong i'm joking <laughs> <laughs> i've got a freaking say even if i had something Put i wouldn't hit say out it no uh hell no is, is there some things that maybe are pitfalls that you are finding yourself falling into or yeah. maybe that you've talked with other um, friends that are black belts they're like man I, I i see some struggle or something what i'm actively working on so and your I, wife is now a black belt as well so yes maybe, yes yeah, yeah. so We've talked about, Carrie and I both talked about this. And when she got her black belt a year after we got ours, Mm -hmm. I was talking about, and then she got that same feeling like, I don't know anything. (laughs) You know what I mean? So true. And uh, I'm like, yep, there you go. Um, So so not for for me, but for maintain some humility. You. Everyone (laughs) should. I I try my best. I really do. and like I told you, what I'm doing myself is recognizing a pitfall of then revisiting things that I feel like I should have developed. Mm-hmm. So I'm going back and working positions mm-hmm. that I notoriously neglected yeah. um, and really fixing that. And then like you're doing, expanding things. I, I really like the stuff you guys are doing with some of the judo. Mm-hmm. I, I, it's, it's super appealing. Um, I see the utility of it, right? When it's so easy to dismiss something you really don't understand mm-hmm. or you don't, can't see, yeah. you know, 
Yeah. Um, so that's a big, and don't get, don't believe your own hype. Yes. You know? Yes. Yeah. Like I know people, you know, they, I've had a, in the past a couple of people like, Oh, well, you know, you're a black belt now. And you know, I'm like, dude, you don't understand, man. I don't have this shit figured out. Yeah. You yeah. know? And so maintaining that level of, you know, they always call it the white belt mentality. Yeah. I think it's the biggest thing you can do a black belt and not think that, I mean, I don't know any, you know, have you run across any that, uh, that really think they're, they got all this shit figured out? A black belt? Yeah. Oh, I, well, at I least mean, in our academy, I, I can't. I've come across people in the wild that are like, obviously, like they think they are the cat's pajamas uh -huh. for sure. Uh, that's and unfortunate. Like, if you have what, you know, because naturally you, you're talking about techniques and stuff like that after a roll or there's like five people sitting on the mats and you're talking and stuff. Yeah, you're holding court. Where I've, I've <laughs> seen, like the people that feel like uh they know the answer and their answer is the only answer yeah that's I've a problem definitely ran across um, that. well for instance like i had a, one of our white belts that's interested in deep half guard mm -hmm. and i'm like well you know i'm i'm definitely not just because i'm a black belt i'm not the best guy i don't play that yeah. i directed him to one of our brown belts who's excellent right that's what I'm saying. It's just like, you know, yeah. you recognize where your shortcomings are. I don't know. Is this such a big term? If you never hear oh. now caveats to this, if you're training under Shanji Habero, he's, he might know everything, <laughs> you know, someone like that, like you have your, but even someone like Andrew, which is a fourth degree black belt, he's been doing jujitsu for 25 plus years. Yep. Like there's times where, he will come up to people and and be like, "How how'd you do that? Yeah, what what were you doing there?" Well, that's why he's so good, right? Right. It's because of that mentality. Um, no, I a hundred percent. But it, it's it's it should be you should hear. I don't know, but I'll figure it out. Or so ask that guy. I've learned that as as a physician. Mm. That's one of the most important things you can say to a patient mm. because a patient comes in. A lot of people think that physicians like it's like you're on some kind of pedestal here and you're this all knowing. Thing. Yeah. We're freaking people, man. Yeah. And the worst physician will freaking bullshit a patient mm. because of their I ego. Imagine. I've had, I routinely, when someone asks me, I'm like, you know what? I don't know. And it's a really good question. Yeah. And I think people really respect that a lot more uh, as opposed to you trying to BS your way through something and just because you yeah. don't want to act like you don't know something. Right. I think that's the biggest, I, that's one of the biggest things I think. Yeah. And that has like bigger consequences too. Oh the, yeah. The, yeah. The, I enjoy when I'm teaching, I will, uh, if I don't know, I will ask them, let me see the question. I'll say, let me see you do it. Mm -hmm. So then I can get a visual of what they're running into. Mm -hmm. And then maybe I'll have them do it to me. Or, you know, so I can kind of work that out. I like to do that. And I know some people hate this. While I'm teaching, I will pull, like, I'll stop the whole class. And I'll say, my rooftop Korean over here, he <laughs> has a question. And he's going to do it to him, his partner. But you think it's beneficial for the class, though? So. Yes. And of course. I pull him to the middle. Yeah. And I don't even know the answer yet. But I... When I'm saying, here, can I see you do it? Mm -hmm. I want everyone to see me have to workshop this and work through it. And if I still don't have an answer, I'm not going to BS. But if I can, like, they can see me kind of, like, working through, okay. And then I'll even ask. Because maybe I, I see it. I'm like, oh, I see exactly what it is. I'll, I'll ask. Be like, does anyone see what's, going, what's wrong here? Mm -hmm. Kind of stoke that thought process. That's a Socratic method of teaching. It's, it's a very it's great crack Socratic. 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 From Socrates. Oh. Yeah. Socratic method. Yeah. Okay. It's actually asking a question. Okay. Them. Yeah. And and try to get people to kind of get into that critical thinking kind of totally. mindset. Totally. And I don't let it last too long because obviously you could just sit there forever. Yeah. But it's I like that I'll get wrong answers. That's a I think that's a good thing. It's a great thing. Where it's like, ah, uh, is it this? No, but that's, you know, maybe there's something that maybe you there can is address with that. Uh -huh. um, 
I, I find that that actually helps quite a bit. I, I like that a lot. That's one of my favorite types of teaching too. Um, matter of fact, you know, I just Saturday, um, someone was asking me a question after class about a position and I thought I had a pretty good workaround, mm -hmm. but I'm like, go ask Bill because mm. he might have another way to look at it. Mm. There's not just one way as much, like you said, For sure. you know, cause you could have someone and then I'm, then I learned too. I'm like, Oh, that's a freaking cool way of approaching that. Just mm -hmm. because I figured out a pathway doesn't mean there's not another maybe better one. Right. Yeah. So I think that's, that, that goes back to having the humility too. I had that with the fireman's carry. Someone was like, mm. man, you're the stand up guy. What's fireman's carry. And you're I was like, like this is how I don't do it. <laughs> And then I called Where's over Dan Bush or someone like that. I called over who was it? A wrestler. Or something. Yeah. Yeah. Might've been like Benny or something like a white or blue belt wrestler. Yeah. Wrestler. And I was like, like, Oh yeah. How, how do you do that? Mm -hmm. His way was totally different. It looks so much smoother. Yeah. And, uh, but that's that yeah. humility piece though. Yeah. You're not, you're not like on well, the black belt. I'm going to, yeah. so I think that's a trap. And, and, just like our answer to purple and brown, uh -huh. black, same thing. Oh, for sure. Now I get there's like this thing where like, I don't got to listen to anybody anymore. I can just do my thing. I can play my clothes guard or whatever your game whatever is. It is. But like, I think you'll have more fun if you start challenging yourself and not just every day you go to the gym playing the and, same damn and game. And playing the damn thing that you hate because yeah. you're like, I'm not any good at it, yeah. right? This and, is a hobby. Enjoy. <laughs> like, It's good for your brain too to do new stuff totally because yeah. i've been sucked into that before where like actually yeah. I, I would say i'm a little bit there right now where i started really honing in spider reverse daily heva and mm -hmm. spider guard mm -hmm. in general mm -hmm. and like uh i really wanted to get good at that yeah of course and um i it's hard for me right now not to play it i just find myself getting those grips yeah and immediately putting my foot in the bicep yeah getting a lasso and just like live in there yep it feels just like safe well you and boots both huh? yeah and he stole it from me of course <laughs> <laughs> the so i'm i'm kind of searching for the next thing i'm gonna try to get better at yeah i don't have it yet like i I, I gotta I, I gotta come back to that comment you made it's not like sure. he's that he stole it from you it's not like he's married to one of the top female black belts in the area that happens to play a crazy good spider lasso game <laughs> i don't think that has anything to do with oh, it. nothing no. at all you don't think no, so no, i think he saw me playing it once i see it and was like i want to be like him <laughs> okay then naturally yeah I get he you. looks at me like kind of like i want to say a big brother but like a father yeah a little bit yeah yeah he, he tried to say that i was his dad too the other day i said i'm not quite old enough <laughs> you just look at maybe oh, i look at yeah i do i do look at um that's funny guys carrie's gonna come on we're gonna knock out this next trt episode last chance to get some questions in yeah we've we're been scheduling the it. crap out of that yep uh we have i think seven questions right now uh so when you have emailed in the last month and a half we still have them it's probably gonna be two weeks from now yeah because she's out of town next week yeah so we'll uh that is coming so last chance if you got some hormone trt stuff um we're gonna talk about it other than that peace thanks y'all <laughs>